There are those in the basketball world who work to become high-level prospects. And then they become it. Lights on. Cameras hot. The media never fails to tell their story. The players that you see in this footage, they're studs, no doubt about it. And one of them, I mean, I knew he was a first rounder a long time ago. But I remember hearing about this game. I've never actually seen the footage though. Have you? When you're not one of those high level guys, you can often fall on the wrong end of politics. However, these are the stories that I love to tell. God is awesome, man. Like, the older I get, the more it becomes clear to me. He set me up for something, but I just don't know what it is. Like, everything in my life seems to connect somehow. And the stories begin to write themselves. Some of the kids that I work with now have walked down a similar path as me. As you push north down Crenshaw Avenue, straight into the heart of Inglewood, head west on our provider. When you reach the dead end, you've arrived. Darby Park is not the safest place in the world, but for Jeremy, myself, and Barrington, this is where it all began for us. But 12 years apart from each other, March 11th, and I'm gonna play defense for the other white team. You're right, he's pretty good at that one right here. Ooh. Ooh. Go, Barrington, go! Oh, good job! And what is your name? <laughs> so run out in that street. Uh -oh. <laughs> shoot it, baby, shoot it! Oh! What do you want to be when you grow up? Spider-Man! You want to be Spider-Man? But you got to be bitten by a spider, then a spider gives you all spider Three years ago, I moved down to LA. Who and I got connected, and then we began training. Jeremy attended Sarah High School, which is Pooh's alma mater, who then connected me to Jeremy, and then we started training. Then we hold an open gym, and Barrington shows up. Come to find out, he attends the same high school that I started at, Rebay Academy. And what do you know? Jeremy and Barrington grew up playing together at Darby Park. I can't make that up. And you can call that luck. You can call it fate or the universe. I just see God doing what he's done my whole life. I even stopped questioning it. 
They're in my life for a reason, as I am in theirs. And now that I'm sure of that, I choose to be the person in their life that I was always missing. Pretty solid. What was that, 11 for 13? Did you get through it? You gotta get through it. You gotta get through it, let's go, bro. You got two minutes to get through it. Season is about to get going for Barrington. It's almost May. COVID really has everything pushed back in California. But we're here. Barrington is at a point where he's considered a true point guard. He does a great job as a leader, but one thing he needs to become better at is shooting the ball. Get in, ball. He's about a year out from being where I want him to be. But in terms of dribbling, he does that. He's got potential to be one of the better ball handlers in California with some work. But he's one of my favorite players to train. Why? Because he reminds me of myself. He's just a better version, and I feel that. So anytime I see him, normally it's a fade on sight. And seriously, it's nothing personal, really. I just see him as a threat. Oh, he did it. He did it. He did it. He did it. Don't steal my ball. <laughs> I'm playing defense like this. <laughs> hey, hook shot. Hook shot. He got it. Oh, he blocked it. <laughs> blocked the <laughs> that was a good move. Four. One on one, he's a monster. And after watching the footage over, it definitely concerns me a little bit. But I packed that thing too. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that was cold, right? That was cold. I don't care what nobody say. That was cold. That was cold, bro. That's like some pro shit, bro. I don't even know what to do with myself. That's like some pro shit right there. Well, another day work. Just chopping up all the blessing, huh? Oh, he checking it out. You want some more? Some more of that pro shit? This is different too. I gotta check. I gotta check what's down over here. You, did I make that? I see what's down over here. Damn, foul. Why is it bullshit? I purposely went over here. I'm so good at this sport. These moments help me understand who a kid is. Barrington, I knew right away he has no fear. And that made me respect him. Not only that, I just enjoy kicking it with him now. You don't think I don't know my own move? Yeah. You don't think I know my own damn move? Come on, let's thank Jesus. Gracious Lord, we truly thank you for food we're about to receive, for the nourishment of our bodies. For Christ's sake, that's not having another God before. And excuse me, we need some more syrup, girl. We playing. Do you enjoy eating in public with your dad? No, I do. It's crazy, it's crazy, because. He's more like my personality than him. That's true. Let me get some of that syrup. But he is different. He's... Oh! Oh! Yeah. 
down. I was pretty foul, my bad. <laughs> I mean, if it helps him, I'm just gonna... Yeah, he's just nervous. Every time he sits by Barrington, he gets nervous. Yeah. yeah, Barrington taking all his moves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm tired of taking my moves. Yeah. And then trying them over. I didn't know it worked. I'm getting sick of it. Because <laughs> it was a trip. When, we were, when he was younger, I used to send everybody after him. How are you doing? Yeah. Everybody, I used to tell him, he the one gonna get you. So he always had a bullseye on his on his back. Uh, Everybody was trying to do it. Huh? You didn't make no friends. What you mean? They was friends? Except when we were pooping their ass. They was not friends. Calvin, who's your favorite NBA team? Lakers. Okay, you get to come in. The rules are coming in here. Barry is different. At first, he'll kind of strike you as the LeVar Ball type. He's loud and right in your face. There's literally nothing shy about him. But the more I get to know him, it's fun to be around. And more than anything, he's a proud father that created a beast. He started basketball in 2007 when he was three. Now this right here, this is about half of his trophies. It's 2007. It's one of his first ones. It's from Inglewood Park. This baseball. This ba ain't no baseball. Look at the trophy. Pee Wee Division. What did it say? Oh, there. It's, 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 it's one of his most favorite. So many things I have in common with Barrington. This is how my dad was in my life. Proud. And my pops is also a die-hard Lakers fan. You may think you're a die-hard fan of your squad, but if you're not on Barry's level, you may want to rethink that. Everything in the house is Laker Nation. This is Kareem. Every room in this house has something that's a Laker. This is the Laker parade. They took a picture of us at the parade. Once again, every room got something to say Lakers. Whoa. Now this piece right here, this is 30 grand. The game he scored 81 points in, signed by Kobe. Now these are my favorite trophies. Okay. Right. Laker trophies. Every time Kobe got a ring, I got a ring. This right here, this is Jamal Wilkes. This is my favorite player. This is the first back-to-back -back team. This is Jerry. Jerry gotta have his spot. But as you see, this segregated. Ain't never white people in here. <laughs> now this right here, for killers come. That's where it go down. Right <laughs> When I take this off, I ain't got no friends. Introducing the kid to basketball, straight out the womb. Yeah, that's one way. Raising the kid on the basketball scene in South Central. Yeah, that's a way. But Barry worked a different path for his son. He did it his way. He was molded in modesty, brought about honestly. In the midst of the process, he raised a kid prodigy. He came home from the hospital in Lake again. Okay, it was it was no doubt. He had a basketball goal downstairs ever since he could walk. You could see. It was something special when he had that basketball in his hand. You know, how many kids at two and a half can dribble? He could barely walk. And this kid around here dribbling. Once I saw that, I nurtured that. Every day I come home, we downstairs shooting until it's time for him to go to bed. I had TV and I used to watch Lakers games and I would mimic everything that they did. So like if someone came down and hit a turnaround jump shot, on the little court, I come down and shoot the same shot I go until I make it. I'm an outgoing, loud, in your face kind of person. 
Barrington is more of an observer. He rarely is loud. He started going to Crossroads uh, School in Santa Monica. He was the only black kid in his class. You knew it, but you didn't know it. It was the elementary part of Crossroads is amazing. His kindergarten class, the first three months, was only about how to interact with each other. It wasn't about the ABCs and all that. It was about being nice. It allowed him to be kind. It was different in me growing up in a school that was like all white and a household that was black. But one thing that my dad did was he would keep me around the park and have me make black friends. And also I have, I'd have white friends. So it was like, I was getting, I was getting two sides of the world. I was getting like the kids that are just like, they're just like me, they play basketball. The other side with Crossroads was it was, they just wanted to go out and hang. They weren't like really competitive or anything like that. His mother was a very calming influence. When we used to go places, she, she was never loud. I was the loud one. His sister was the loud one. But him and her were always just calm, and that's just how they are. My dad's my biggest fan, and he's always gonna be in my ear. He's gonna be my biggest critic, but at the same time, he's gonna tell me when I'm doing good. And like, he, he does some childish stuff. But it's like, I, I know it's all love, and I know that that's just who he is, and I couldn't ask for a better dad. I try not to look too far into the future, but it's hard, especially after seeing their bond. Sometimes I gotta think, wait, hold up. Time flies. I mean, how many times have I seen this connection? Crazy, right? But now looking at the calendar, I'm like, damn, man, slow up. I'm a father now. I enjoy Scott so much as an infant. And in a way, I'm almost afraid to introduce him to basketball. Just because I know what comes with it. Now that I'm a pops, I really just want him to enjoy life. I won't force it. You can hold me to that. But, I mean, there's gonna be a little influence here and there. I can't really help it. It's the only life I know. The thought is exciting, so I'm always fighting to stay in the present, opposed to looking too far in the future. of really cute gifts from the NBA. Some bibs, little shoulder the shoulder spit up, and some cute onesies. This is really cool basketball. It says it's a basketball with his name on it. I gave him a sick name, Sky Michael Williams, just in case like he does make it. I'm not gonna force him to play basketball. Everybody thinks I'm gonna force him to play basketball. I'm really not. But it's gonna be a strong influence in case you haven't noticed already. We got the yeah. basketball planners. I got uh, <laughs> the ABCs of basketball, basketball legend alphabet. Yeah. Let's see, let's see uh, you know, Kareem, uh, A for Kareem Abdul, B for Burt. Oh, come on, you know I know what I'm doing. He's in the lab. He's in the lab, he just don't know it yet. He's been in the lab. Yeah, he's in the lab, so. It's been, it's been a whole journey, man, just trying to figure this kid out and definitely one of many. Yeah. Definitely want another one. <laughs> Game one against the Gore Hills. Rebe is the more talented team, but from what I hear, this would be a good warm up because the Gore is super disciplined and runs his stuff. Also, Rebe is short handed too. Got six guys playing today and they're missing some dogs. So in my head, I'm thinking like, all right, Barrington, go get a bucket. The game started off with me unsure if they were playing against Steph Curry or not. Point guard battles are what I love the most, so I was wondering if Barrington was up for it. And he 
answered the call. Matter of fact, he was matching his energy. Agoro's taking all the punches though, still running their stuff. And then in came Tyler Powell, a senior committed to Seton All who also trains with me. He's the type of player that when he gets going, he scores in bunches. When he pulled up, you could start to see how good Rebay could be. And this, nah, it wasn't even the tip of the iceberg. Tighten up on defense and stop letting guys control the game. Trying to get my teammates more shots and also look for myself and be a defensive leader. I wouldn't say that they played great today. There were times in the game where Gore got whatever they wanted. And then there were times where Rebe was locked in. You can see the potential even though a lot of players were missing. I was proud of Barrington and Tyler. They came to play. But Barrington said he was going to get it done. And whenever he says he's going to do something, he does it. He's really a man of his word. Yeah, but not today. I didn't even pay to get in the game, and I still wanted my money back for that. Uh, yes, it was a good game. I thought he missed a few bunnies that he usually might, but... The work we've been putting in was getting his jump shot, and that was really on point. I, right. th I, I needed to stay like that. Yeah. His defense was good. He didn't get a lot of fouls. He had to play a lot of minutes. So I understand it. The first game jitter, we'll be there. We'll be back in the lab <laughs> come uh, Monday. That was some sorry shit you pulled on the fast break. How'd you feel about that? Hey. My knees are done. I don't care if I shoot. I switched out. I switched out ducking for shooting. Can you? Can you blame me? No, no, no I don't blame you. He shot the ball well, and I was very proud of that because I, I was gonna be on your. I was gonna be on your case if you didn't shoot the three pointers today. He missed the pull up. I'm not mad at that. But that was some sorry shit on the break. You gonna put down the story? Yeah. And, 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 hold on, hold on. And he serious? been telling me how much bounce he had. You gonna That's put down the, the story? Are you serious? Don't lie to me. Why should not? Why like, wouldn't I? How and how I, got, how I can pair it up with you telling me how, how much <laughs> bounce you got. How much you want? We're going to keep down the low. No. You can't pay me, y'all. No. That's grimy. That's grimy. Well, for me, this is turning out to be quite the story. Let me tell you why. Guess who's getting ready to play against each other in about a week? You guessed it. Rebe vs. Sarah. Jerm specifically asked his coach to set it up. He's chasing smoke, and I love it. Here's what's funny to me though, when the ones get ran, most often Barron just win it 8 times out of 10. Jeremy doesn't have ones like that, it's not really something I focused on like that with him. And for whatever reason, Tyler, he always just tries to punk Jeremy. Like they get along off the court, but Tyler hates Jeremy on the court. It's pretty weird actually, but funny at the same time. Jerm's young for his grade. All three grew up playing together, but Jerm was like the little homie. Jerm was trying to get right, so he pulled up to our college runs after a 30-point game. Man, I respect that. I enjoy seeing how the older guys take to him. They always pick him up and mentor him. How it should be. He'll need all of this, because Rebe is no joke. The preparation against Rebe, because Rebe is good. You feel me? Like, and Barrington is a person that's been with that. You feel me? And Tyler, like, you know, I, I I go against all of them. You know, so Barrington is one of my favorites. It really improved on his shot. You know, now he's getting the more arc on his shot, and he's he stays in it. You feel me? Like, and having a a, a dad. You feel me? Like, yeah. like that. You feel me? That's mm -hmm. pushing him and making sure that he's a dog. That 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 counts a lot too. But with Jeremy, it starts now. Feel me? Like he's out here, he's playing against Gomez, he's playing against Ethan Anderson, you know, he's playing against me. Like, my dude, we're putting the right people in front of you. 
for you to like really, ah, ah, like get into your bag. But this whole week, he needs to prepare that team because they're going against. This is game film right here. This is the game where you gotta come out and be vocal and lead that team. Hey, hey, over there. Like, he's not giving me that yet, you know. But Barrington is gonna be on him. Like you're not friends in between the lines. God told us to be strong and courageous. You feel me? Like so, he gotta prepare himself mentally. You feel me? If that's before practice, getting them shots up after. He's up here at six in the morning every day. It's like, my dude, like, you're doing things that nobody's doing. But Barrington's right with you. You <laughs> feel me too? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's that confidence. Like, dude, I'm doing things that nobody's doing. I need to show that. So I hope he continues to show that he's one of the best point guards in his class. Our two main characters were on a crash course that could only be ruined by COVID or injury. And even that would have a tough time stopping Rebecca. Thomas. She's my mom. She's not really like, she's more my fun side, like Disneyland type, all that good stuff. Like, I'm a fun guy. No cap cap. <laughs> From the looks of things, Sarah was in trouble. If I'm a betting man, I'm betting my house on Rebay. Sarah was on a little winning streak though, but Rebay was rolling. They were taller, more athletic, and deeper. But you never know what can happen in this sport. Upsets happen all the time. But before that game takes place, Rebay's got their hands full with their first challenge. Another top-ranked team just like them. They're well-coached, highly skilled, and super disciplined. Corona Centennial. You could tell by their demeanor. They've been waiting on this game. This is the moment that would begin to shed light on Rebay Academy. Or better yet, expose some of their flaws. Locked at 17. It was a back and forth type of game. Every time one team leveled up, the other side got right with them. 
Oh, but the night was young in Glendale, California. So much time left to break your opponent. Why rush? You could feel it though, right? I think everybody knew this was going the distance. experience takeover mode when you enter a state where you can't be stopped. You can feel it happening with Berenson. You can tell he can smell blood. But Bay was starting to take control. But Centennial just wouldn't give up. No matter how many times they tried to put him away, Corona made a winning play. Seven seconds left. We're bay up by three. Game on the line. Rebay had the game won. At one point, they were up by double digits. But costly mistakes got them in this situation. But in overtime, nothing changed. Both teams were fully confident. Both teams still trading buckets. Until the play that decided the game. I hate it had to be my little bro. But honestly, this was a teaching moment. I know it hurts, but I can't tell you how many times I've told him to go game speed shooting this exact shot. Came back to bite him for the game. Sucks, but sometimes you just fall short. Good game. Hey, down the stretch, we got our play. It was that simple. 
24 did not <laughs> produce. <laughs> he did not do what he supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> that little shot he missed, <laughs> you can't miss that. That gotta be money. But hey, he'll learn, he'll grow. We can't let this game, you know, hold us from the next game. So, just like college, you're preparing for college and NBA, you can't let a loss just, you know, you know, make you feel down and like make you feel discouraged and not motivated to go harder the next game. This is, if anything, should hunger, hunger us. So that's how I feel about it. Shit happens. That's just what it is. Uh, it's an opportunity to get better though. And that's what we're gonna do today. You missed a crucial shot and you know, it's not what lost you the game, to be honest with you, but it's one we're gonna work on today. And then you go cold and you go hot, just like you do in workouts. So we just need to build some consistency there, right? I'm telling you right now that you guys are all Division I basketball players and potential pros, but you have to treat your practices like, like pro workouts, like, like the game. What, and then what's gonna happen when you get in the game? It's not gonna be no different for you guys, right? But if you come here and you BS and you kind of take off, you know, just kind of chill, it's gonna happen, it's gonna show up in the game. This reason why we show up, we wake up early in the morning, so let's get better while we're here, all right? Get up, boy. I actually value being a developer more than the bad times, opposed to when everything is all good. I'm happy that losing the game yesterday pissed Barrington off. I don't think I'd want to train him if it didn't. We must have shot that runner like 300 times this morning. Watch film. I mean, the whole game provided such great teaching moments. A big part of mental toughness is being able to move on to the next play, the next game. Whether you win or lose, not getting stuck on a high or a low while at the same time learning as you proceed through it. But the best thing about the game being over is it was finally time. I was so hyped for it, way more than the others. Germ was chasing smoke, so show up then. Two kids connected since childhood, with roots buried deep into the soil. Destined to run into each other along the path. We meet on equal terms. The underdogs, Sarah High School. Led by a rapidly improving Jeremy Dan. A team yet to find their own identity. Question is, did they even stand a chance? As for a bet, after a tough loss, they gotta be searching for blood. With their overall talent, it would be too much for Sarah to handle. This roller coaster ride was about to take off, full of plenty of surprises, and the story was far from over. Find out how it turns out in the next episode of 10,000 Hours. Sierra King, we at Big Boy School. It's time for the Big Boy Test. Stop the ball with your what? Get the stand, get the stand, and move your feet. I just want to thank everybody for supporting 10,000 hours throughout the years. If you guys are looking to support even more, we got, well, I made these shorts uh, in honor of Kobe. So you see, we got the snake right there, and we got shorts on inthelab.tv. We also have the Monkey King shorts that just came out. You can find these on inthelab.tv. Thanks for everybody that's been supporting our gear like throughout the years. So that's been dope seeing everything grow. We need your help. We're trying to turn this into a Netflix series. So if you guys can donate some money, we're going to leave the link below that so you guys can donate. 
And then on top of that, we need to get our numbers up so more people can see this and we can show present this to Netflix and all that, Amazon Prime, whoever wants to take this. We think we can take it to a different level. We can't do it without your help. We need you to like, subscribe, comment. Comment, let me know what you want to see next. This series is far from over. We got a lot of stuff left to unpack. And I just want to, man, just thank you guys for just supporting it this far. And I can't wait till you see what happens next.